Kaminsky. Welcome to our Facebook Live today. Handel Group is so excited to welcome Emily Fletcher to our conversation today. She is the founder of Ziva Meditation, and she is one of our favorite partners. We are out to do the same thing in the world, which is peace on earth. We're out to help people get out of their own heads, or if they're in their heads, to be using that time productively. And she is a great partner in helping make that possible on the planet. So, so glad to have you, Emily. Thank you for having me. I'm really, I feel the same about you guys. I feel honored to work with you both personally, and I feel thrilled to be able to chat with your amazing humans and your tribe right now. Yeah. So it's a very auspicious time for you and for the planet where you have finally developed something where everybody and anybody can get their hands on your wisdom. And, you know, we coach people all day long, all the time, and we very much are teaching people the importance of meditation and also manifesting. And that's kind of your whole shebang. So it's very simpatico. Um, tell us what's new over there. What have you just created? What can people, what's possible now? Yeah. So uh, similarly, you know, you guys, I'm sure you have spent years cultivating what you do face to face with your clients, working with companies and same, I have a studio in New York and I've spent uh, about six years now teaching people face to face and teaching at companies. And finally I was like, you know, people need to have access to these tools all over the world. It's not just for the elite. It's not just for people who live in New York or LA. And so we actually created the world's first online meditation training about six years ago. And it's been such an honor and such a delight to see if it was an experiment. I didn't even know if it would work. Turns out it does. And we've had thousands of people move through it. But recently, the neuroscience has gotten so much better. The technology has gotten so much better. I like to think that I'm a better teacher now than I was six years ago. And so we created this new course called Ziva Online. And it's a 15-day training. It's about 15 minutes a day for 15 days. And it's a matriculation. It's not a challenge. It's not an app. It's not an addiction model. It's basically teaching you to become a self-sufficient meditator so that you have a practice to take with you for life, so that you can do it anywhere, anytime, on a bus, on a plane, with your kids screaming in the next room, in a conference room at your office. Like I teach you that noise is no barrier to meditation. What about coffee, exercise, sex? What if I'm busy? You know, all just the normal, like everyday things that get in our way. And, and like you said, the, the Ziva technique is this beautiful trifecta of mindfulness, meditation, and manifesting. And honestly, I want to give a huge shout out to you guys at the Handel Group because a lot of the manifesting tools I've learned from you and from Lauren Zander and from Neville Goddard, and I do not claim to be an expert in it. And actually what I do is that I get people like this sort of foundation, this primer in the meditation and the manifesting, and I, I sort of give them an exposure, sorry, the mindfulness and the meditation, and I give them an exposure to the manifesting. I'm like, hey, if you guys want to go work with the experts, go see my friends at Handel because you guys are awesome at it. <laughs> Partnership. Okay, you said something I have to follow up on. Okay. Are you implying that I can do my meditation while I'm having sex? <laughs> I <laughs> wish. <laughs> Clarify for me for one second. Thank you for highlighting this. Okay. What I was saying is sort of giving people the nitty gritty on how to time it because a lot of people are like, well, should I have sex first or should I meditate first or vice versa? I mean, sure, there are like transcendent ecstatic things that you can do when you're having sex. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but but so, yeah. I would not recommend practicing Ziva meditation while you're actually having sex. Although I will say that it is a big benefit and it's something that people are not talking about is that better sex is one of the big benefits of meditation because I think a lot of people associate meditation with monks and a lot of the meditations out there are derivations of monastic practices where it was, we, we teach at Ziva is all for like high performers. It's all about better performance and that includes your performance in the bedroom. Excellent. I'm <laughs> really glad you clarified that. <laughs> so tell me the best, what's your best um, development since you started manifesting? What's manifesting all about? Give people a little taste of, you personally and what they could expect from that. Yeah. So a quick fun story is, you know, I feel like one of my gifts as a teacher is, you know, I used to be on Broadway for 10 years and, and now I'm a meditation teacher. And so I feel like I get to use my lifetime of performance training 
but to apply it into these tools that really help people up level their lives very quickly. And so I like being in front of crowds. I like being on TV. It's fun for me. Whereas a lot of meditation teachers that freaks them out. It makes them nervous. It makes them want to vomit. They have no interest in it. And so I feel like I'm uniquely suited to take some of these more esoteric tools and really bring them into the mainstream. And it's actually enjoyable for me. So anyway, what this one day I was like, you know what? It's time. Andy Puticombe from Headspace was on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. And I was like, for like five minutes, I was insanely jealous because I was like, that was supposed to be me. I love Jimmy Fallon. I was supposed to be the first meditation teacher on late night TV. And then uh, 10 minutes later, I was like, you're ridiculous. Uh, okay, he, he's paving the way. You're going to be on all the morning shows next week. And so I just got really clear and I was like, I want to be on national television uh, within the week talking about meditation. And three days later, I was on the Today Show with my first national TV wow. spot for Ziva. And so, and it, yeah, and it was just the specificity and the clarity. And I think the big piece that a lot of people miss with manifesting is they forget to be specific. They forget to actually place the order with the cosmic waitress at the cosmic restaurant. And the thing is like, you could meditate all day long, but if you're not clear about what it is that you want in your life and you don't take the time to articulate it, it's very hard for the waitress to bring you the order. And that's what I've really learned from working with you guys. And, and it's just, it, it helps move the needle so quickly. And I would also offer that conversely, you know, you could manifest all day, you could make vision boards all day long, but if you're not doing that work, that inner work of cleaning house, if, if you don't believe that you deserve your desires, they're not coming. And that's really what the meditation does for you. So the meditation that we teach at Ziva, it's, um, it gives your body rest that's about two to five times deeper than sleep. And that is not an insignificant. I always tell myself, I always say, oh, it's okay that I didn't get enough sleep. I'm going to make it up in my meditation. That's perfect. <laughs> Yeah, and honestly, it is on the nights that you don't sleep enough. It's like it's a nice boost. It helps you. So when you give your body that deep healing rest, it knows how to heal itself. And one of the things that it heals itself from is stress. So basically what we're doing is we're going in and we're eradicating the lifetime of accumulated stresses from our nervous system, which sort of in turn up levels your, your deserving power, as I call it. it. It helps you to actually believe that you deserve everything that you want. Because I'm, as you well know, we don't get what we want in life. We get what we believe we deserve. And so I feel like the combination of meditation and manifesting is so much more powerful than either one alone. It's like the whole really is greater than the sum of its parts. And it feels like magic. It feels like superhuman. It's not magic. It's not superhuman. It's a return on investment. And really what we do is we teach people how to make that investment and and what specific tools uh, provide the biggest return on investment. Amazing. Thank you for going out ahead and figuring it out for us because we don't have time, Emily. Yes. <laughs> That's their whole gig. Very simple for us. Okay. So meditating and manifesting and how they work together. To me, I feel like meditating is like clearing a channel. And like you said, getting present to yourself. And also, interestingly, you know, the Handel method puts in personal integrity, like really aligning your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions also for the same reason, to start to feel like you deserve something. Mm -hmm. And then you start to feel like you deserve, you start resonating with what you want. Then you plant the seeds through manifestation and psh, all of a sudden now you're not just feeling more peaceful and more calm and more deserving. You're also able to imagine something and then watch it come towards you. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to share about just how meditating and manifesting work together? Mm -hmm. So when, when we're stressed, which the reality is everybody's stressed. And even if you don't identify as being stressed, if you're a human being on the planet right now, if you've ever taken a plane ride, if you've ever eaten a mango in the winter time or ever microwaved your food, God forbid. what's that? Watch the news. God forbid. Well, watch the news. Dear Lord. Um, so if you just being a human right now, it means that there is your body's under some level of demand. We're not, none of us are acting in accordance with nature. So it's creating some level of stress in your nervous system. So, when we are stressed, the body it launches involuntarily into a fight or flight stress reaction. The body becomes acidic, our digestion shuts down, our immune function goes to the back burner. But more importantly, we get stuck reviewing the past and rehearsing the future. And a lot of us get stuck in this sort of blanket complaint. And we find safety and security and unity from complaining with other people. Like, oh God, isn't the weather awful? Isn't climate change so scary? Doesn't our president you know, need to do X, Y, and Z? And so it's, it, it's this um, illusion of unity that we're finding through complaining. And, what, and a lot of 
of us tend to carry that over, that stress over into our manifesting work where we're just like, I just want a boyfriend. I want to lose weight. I don't I want more money. I and mean, we think we're manifesting, but we're actually just complaining. Is that what you're saying? We're wine-ifesting? <laughs> we're wine-ifesting. That's a good term. Wow. And so I find that the meditation is step one because you go in and you actually get rid of the stress in your body. You get rid of the adrenaline and cortisol, which are acidic in nature, and you start to flood your brain and body with dopamine and serotonin, which are bliss chemicals. So it's actually changing the lens through which you see the current reality. So you can start to actually bless and love and thank where you are now. And it's a thousand times more fun and more effective when you're manifesting from a place of gratitude and abundance and presence versus a place of lack or need or stress. Because as you guys know, like one of the big tricks in manifesting is getting yourself into the, into the mind space as if that thing is happening now. And I just think that's easier to do when you're not a bag of stress. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, just to bring it back to sex, which I always like to do, it's, it seems like it's lubricating the whole. Ooh. I like that very much. I like the, I like the benefits. Okay. What are the misconceptions or myths about meditation that we can dispel right here, right now? Okay. The big, big number one is people think that the point is to clear the mind. Okay. So if you ever tried to meditate and you've ever felt frustrated because you couldn't clear your mind, please listen up. The mind thinks involuntarily, just like the heart beats involuntarily. So trying to give your brain a command to shut up is as impactful as trying to give your heart a command to stop beating. It does not work, and yet this is the criteria by which most people are judging themselves as to whether or not they can meditate. And then it looks like this. They're like, okay, brain, stop thinking. Hmm, sure would like a snack. <laughs> Snacks are delicious. Hmm, maybe I should have sex instead of meditating. And then you're like, I suck at meditation and I quit. And then that's the beginning and the end of most people's meditation career. And it makes them sad. Wine. What's that? That's the beginning of your wine infestation. That you're right. Not a end, of, end of meditation, beginning of wine infestation. Um, and so it makes me sad because then people have potentially robbed themselves of a lifetime of bliss and fulfillment because they're judging themselves based on misinformation. And so the reality is that the point of meditation is not to clear the mind. We meditate to get good at life, not to get good at meditation. No one gives a crap about how many or few thoughts you're having when you sit quietly in a chair. Everyone cares how good you are at life, how kind are you, how compassionate are you, how present, how integral, how's your sleep, how's your sex, how's your immune system. People care about this stuff. And you can get all of those benefits from meditation even if you're having thoughts. So that's the big one. And I'd say number two is that people allow themselves to live into the lie, which is that I'm too busy to meditate. But let's blow that logic up real quick. If you believe that stress makes you stupid, which PS, stress makes you stupid, um, and slow, and sick, you know, doctors are calling stress the black plague of our century. It is responsible for somewhere between 80 to 90% of all doctors' visits. So, um, so if you believe that stress makes you stupid, sick, and slow, and if you believe that meditation is the most powerful stress relieving tool we have, then this logic of I'm too busy to meditate does not hold up. It'd be like saying, not to meditate. <laughs> yeah, you're too busy not to meditate. Yeah. When we go in, we do it, we get faster, we get smarter, we get more creative, we get more intuitive, and life just tends to be so much more elegant. And your sleep becomes more efficient, and you stop getting sick, your jet lag goes away. Like it, it feels like magic, but again, not magic return on investment from doing the right practices. It's honestly, it's science. Science proves all of this true and has proven all of this true. And I've also personally experienced it from going from being a non -med a meditator to a meditator. All those benefits you said are absolutely true, which is why, as coaches at Handel Group, probably in our top three most popular promises that we have people make is is to meditate because the return on investment is so insanely good. Yeah. So um, thank you for making it easy and thank you for making it clear why. It's really obvious to me that nobody can afford not to meditate given what it does for us. Um, and at Handel, you know, we do a lot of work with people on their minds. That's kind of like the the uh the main special sauce right so anything any additional resources like this to, that people can use to help to understand their minds and mm. power with their minds is very helpful to what we're trying to do again that's why i think there's such a good marriage between us all right can you tell me a little bit about what happens so there's the 15-day practice the mm -hmm. as you called it where you can really become a master 
meditate or get your own practice, take it with you forever, use it forever. What if I'm not ready to commit to 15 days? What if I, like, how do I, how do I find out what's different about you than any other meditation program I could do? Yeah. So thank you for asking that. And so we created a one hour free masterclass. It's called the stress solutions, uh, the stress solution, singular, three ways to manage anxiety. So it doesn't manage you. Right. Because the reality is, if you're not actively managing your anxiety, it is managing you, whether you know it or not. And so in, in this masterclass, it's one hour it's totally free. Um, you guys, I think, have a link to that. If you want to post it in the comments, you guys can get it through their link. And it is basically a way to, you know, figure out if you like me as a teacher or not. See if you think I'm a ding dong head. I walk you through the neuroscience of mindfulness, meditation and manifesting. And I walk you through actually a mindfulness exercise and a manifesting exercise. The meditation is a little bit more complicated, so that's what we teach in the actual 15-day training. Um, but it's I'm really proud of it, and it's uh, I think it's a great way for people to get to know Ziva, the Ziva technique, and me. And by the end of it, like you'll know in your gut if you're like, oh yeah, this is my teacher, I like this, I want to dive in, or you're like, I learned a lot, I'm good, I'm gonna live my dreams. Okay, I think I just want to close about it, with talking a little bit about anxiety because I feel like that's something almost every single client who comes to us talks about on some level or another. Do, can you tell us a little bit of just about how, what kind of results are people seeing about anxiety and why from using? Yeah, yeah so in, in India, we would call depression, anxiety, insomnia, PTSD, ADHD, like these are all symptoms of the same thing, which is stress. But anxiety is what um, I think high performers and high achievers like to use instead of the word fear, right? <laughs> oh, um, I'm anxious, I'm stressed. And so, but reality is anxiousness is usually a result of um, speculation and uh, rehearsing the future, sometimes incessantly. And we do that because we have all this trauma from our past that's been stored in our cellular memory. And so the brain is spending so much time reviewing the past, looking at all that trauma, and then rehearsing whether or not that it's gonna happen again, right? Like my parents got divorced when I was 12. Am I gonna get hurt again when I'm 40? This guy broke my heart when I was 16. I don't wanna get married to someone who's gonna break my heart in the future. And so what we're doing here is that we're in the meditation, we're taking the right brain to the gym, which is the piece of you that's in charge of the present moment. And the reality is you can't move away from the anxiety. You can't move away from the stress. And when you try to, when you try and fight it, it fights back. What you can do is you can move towards the present moment. You can strengthen your right brain. You can bring yourself, give yourself tools to come right here, right now, which is where our bliss and fulfillment lie right here, right now. Every spiritual text has said this since the beginning of time. And so what we do is that we start to move towards the positive instead of away from the negative. And over time, that becomes your default. And the anxiety, like my students say to me, like, Emily, I can't even remember the headspace I was in. I can't even remember what it felt like to have insomnia. I can't remember what it felt like to be in abusive relationships because their new reality is so different. And that just becomes the new norm. Oh. Well, then I believe that there is hope for humanity and for our wonderful human culture. Thank you so much for providing tools for us and ways to believe and hope for changes that we can feel for ourselves and for other people in our lives. I personally, as a lifelong warrior, you know, just completely agree. And I also know that if you don't work the tools, they don't work. So you, have to, you can't just think about doing it. You have to actually do it. Um, so thank you for that. I think everybody should certainly try the free hour. No harm in that. And then if the 15 day process seems like the right way to become much more masterful, that is a great, great opportunity. So thank you. Is there anything else you want to share with anybody? Uh, I just want to say thank you so much for having me. Thank you guys for the work that you do. It's so important. It's helped me so much. And I would say to those listening, like even if you're a little curious, even if you think you don't have time, even if you've been frustrated with meditation in the past, like give this a try. It's really fun. You know, I make it funny and entertaining in a way that you actually look forward to it each day. So I'd say if you can go into this with beginner's mind, it might actually change the trajectory of the rest of your life. I think that's a very good bet. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Emily, for your time. My pleasure. Bye, friends. Enjoy.